All right, another week, another nice suite of earnings coming on. I am super excited for this week as far as earnings are concerned. I think we got a, good, a lot of good bangers out here, as I like to call them. These are just quality companies reporting some earnings. I'm very excited as we've had such a horrible, horrible week in the market. It'll be an interesting thing to see if uh, earnings will be able to potentially start that uh, that upturn back to where we need to be. Now, will it happen? I'm not sure. Right now, market sentiment's pretty negative, but we'll see come Monday. Um, there's certainly a chance, and hopefully these earnings can help. Uh, there was a couple stocks last week that, based off of earnings, did a good job staying positive in a time in which the market was horrific. Um, so let's talk into this. It's a slightly faded version. Don't worry. The color's a little bit off on this one. It's a little, little askew, but don't be afraid. We're all going to get through this. So, as far as what we're expecting um, from the earnings release this week, on Monday before open, we've got JD.com, um, subsidiary of Walmart. Uh, uh, exciting stuff. Uh, interesting to see how an e-commerce platform um, over in China is doing. Um, we will see how they are doing based off of obviously everything going on over there right now. I don't know necessarily what this earnings looks like. Um, if this uh, coronavirus issue has actually have impacted them at all this quarter, maybe it's a next quarter type thing, not entirely sure. Probably more of a next quarter impact than this quarter, but we will see um, how their earnings look because I think that will be good for the market if they post good earnings. We've got Densply Serona. I don't know what that's, that's the weirdest word in my life, and I think I said it right, but uh, regardless, I think we're good. We've got Amicus Therapeutics. We've got intracellular therapies. Seems like some, some good old biotech companies, which, again, don't really tend to mess with those biotechs. I promise you that. I don't tend to mess with them, but I certainly know a certain someone that does. You know who you are. I appreciate you, man. Always, always sticking there. I love it. Love it. And I know you've been getting some gains, so let's see if you're in these positions. I'm excited for you. Um, we've got Essential Properties. Alberio, um, GTT, Technoglass, okay, love it, Wave, and Evergy, I gotta be honest, there's some snoozers Monday before open, there's definitely some snoozers, I don't think there's any denying the amount of snoozers, so, but I think after close, I think we, we boost up just a little bit, but really not that, that much, um, so, I think there's an interesting one, obviously, after close Monday will be Tilray. Uh, you know that because of the Mary Jane stocks. Um, Tilray is one of the most tragic stories of a, of a mountain, if you've ever seen it. Their stock chart is, in fact, um, when as high as Mount Everest. Um, I think it's a good company to look at, too, because this is when um, weed stocks went up significantly, and then... <laughs> shot right back down to the moon so pretty much Tilray um, had a um, a high their high was like it was, the stock was like $300 at one point and it's now a $14 stock as you can tell um, people came to reality of what the hype is um, it was a little bit overhyped and very overvalued so people saw it but it'll be interesting still to look at these earnings because I do think it could find that same surge again if they happen to post very good revenue growth. No doubt about it. And if they post good guidance, I could see people flooding back into these type of stocks. Um, we've got Stone Company, Livongo, um, Ever, Every, okay, Green Sky, Impinge, Boingo. I like Boingo. Something makes me happy when I say Boingo. That's all. I don't know. We've got Appfolio, Amerisco, and All Scripts. Which again, All Scripts, that's definitely a drug company. Come on, if I've ever known myself, we'll see exactly what they have to offer here. Because at this point in the market, it seems like biotechs are the safe bet, at, which which is never the case. But it is now. It seems like it's some crazy stuff. But Tuesday, we finally get into the bangers that we want. We get into the ones we really want to see. And I'm interested 
to see how we get uh, how we come along here on Tuesday. Before open, pure heater right off the bat. Target, I think Target's going to be a huge, huge earnings for the retail sector. Not only because it's uh, one of the top, you know, largest retailers out there, but obviously retail is in question right now due to impact of supply chain due to coronavirus issues. Um, so their guidance, I think, is going to be key. This quarter should not be impacted at, at all as far as the earnings are considered, but the guidance is really what's going to matter for here. Um, this is going to translate into what stocks like Walmart um, are really feeling. If Walmart, uh, Walmart might go down, if Target goes down, if they pose bad guidance, we'll see. Um, but Target's a good position for me. It's one, even after this big old drop, I kind of like it because I have the chance now to purchase more shares, which I'm a fan of for sure. Um, but I'm excited for Target and seeing what they could do. My fear is guidance and people are just going to sell out because that's what the market sentiment is right now. But we've had such a big correction, I think it's hard to really find that much of a drop as is um, from here. So we've got AutoZone after that. Uh, AutoZone. Um, that's their, that's their slogan. I, I don't think it is. Is it? I don't know. I think I'm crazy. I think it was a joke, but then I feel like it may have been right. But I don't know. Anyways, afterwards, we have Kohl's. Again, as a lot, a vast majority, um, probably 90% of their clothing is going to be produced in China. Again, I think it's going to be huge to see what exactly happens with their supply chain, if that's impacted at all. Um... I don't know. Again, I think it's not going to be quarterly. This quarterly earnings that it matters. I think it's going to be the guidance that they post is what's happened to the stock. Really, it's a stock at 52-week lows, so I'm always interested in picking up more. Um, no doubt about it. So, it does not upset me one bit if we have some some quality, quality, quality earnings. So we've got C. Okay, uh, Antares. Armstrong, International Segways, or Seaways, sorry, that's not Segways, I don't know, I was thinking about riding on a motorized vehicle like Paul Blart for a second there, I wanted to feel like Paul Blart the mall cop, and I know anyone else really should want to feel like that too, it's it's just, an, it probably is a great feeling, um, we've got IGT, Autoless, and CHF Solutions, that is your before open on Tuesday. So after open, um, we have not that much great, but there's definitely some good ones. Uh, we have Viva, Viva Las Vegas, baby. Um, Nordstrom again. You see these um, really clothing-focused companies. Guidance is going to be key for them. I'm very interested to see what Nordstrom can do. It's been a pretty hot stock as of late, so. Um, obviously not as of late, late, but previously it was, so we'll see how it does. Um, we've got Benefit Focus, Ross, another really, you know, clothing company, so we'll see how they do. It's all going to be guidance, all going to be guidance, guys. But again, this is Q4 form, so, um, you know, same thing with Kohl's, Target, these retailers. Q4 is the big quarter form, so they really want to post good results. Uh, the fierce guidance, though, from there. We have H Hewlett Packard Enterprises HPE, as opposed to HP, um, which you know obviously Hewlett Packard Enterprises split off from HP. They split, became two separate companies. I prefer um, the other HP personally, but you know, to each their own. Um, we've got Amberella, a chip maker again, big, big stuff for Amberella. Um, as we find some fears for guidance from big tech companies the question is is this going to impact the chip makers and production because that's really what matters here so if production gets slowed down then poor companies like Umbrella, these chip makers are going to get hit pretty hard um, as far as guidance is concerned obviously you're not going to see again this quarter's impact should not be uh, significant but next quarter they could post something that's you know maybe not as good we'll see what the guidance looks like on these chip companies after that we have cardlytics Health Insurance Innovators, uh, Urban Outfitters, again, another clothing company, and Direct. Mm -hmm. um, Wednesday, before open, we've got a lovely Dollar Tree. Um, obviously, there's always room for dollar dollar stores, but 
it just shocks me how many still exist, and I don't, I don't think I've ever been in one besides once or twice. Definitely not the kind of environment for me. It's a absolute nightmare in those dollar stores. I tell you what, it is crazy in there. Um, no matter what, it just it feels like there's there's an interesting personnel usually, uh, interesting clientele that shops at the Dollar Tree typically. Not everyone, but there's definitely an interesting clientele there. I, I think you know what I mean. <laughs> got him. But interesting to look at them. We've got Maxar Technologies, a stock that went up quite quite a bit for a while and has now fallen back down. Um, really a, a space-related stock, so definitely an interesting one to look at for the future. See how they did. I know they signed a recently signed a, another contract with NASA, so... I don't know if that's going to impact their revenue this quarter or next quarter, but they did sign a new contract with them, so I'm interested to see what all they can do. But Maxar is an interesting stock for sure, just to take a peek at for the future. We've got Abercrombie and Fitch. Uh, obviously, the main thing is they're going to do great, just based off of the fact that uh, you know Post Malone made a song mentioning Abercrombie and Fitch. So the fact that Post Malone's talking about them, you know they're going to be doing good, but. Again, clothing company, how are they doing with supply in the future? That's what matters. Um, Campbell Soup. Um, again, uh, you know, just a classic um, consumer stock that, that really is a is pretty good uh, portfolio base. Um, pretty steady stock. Good way to just kind of trace the market because Campbell Soup is a boring, boring stock to be in. But it is a consistent one, and I think that's what, what is nice to see. So Campbell Soup is a good thing. Potentially with this dip down, you might be able to add on to some Campbell stock onto your portfolio just because it's a good way to round out your portfolio with a pretty just low volatility, basic-looking stock because people are always going to be buying chicken noodle soup. That's just a fact. People are always going to be buying soup. Um, that one will not go away. And once, obviously, the inevitable zombie apocalypse happens, people are going to be stocking up on soup like no other. Okay, It's inevitable. What can I say? The the signs are written in the sand. Um, there's OM. There's Photronics. Trans. Alta. We've got Baytex. A brown foreman. I don't know about that one. Makes me feel weird saying that. Um... Navy Navy Star Nav I know the I know how to pronounce it, but then all of a sudden I can't think of it out of nowhere. Navistar Navistar I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, after close though Wednesday, we've got Zoom. Um, Zoom is obviously an interesting little platform for business meetings, um, conference calls really. So Zoom, interesting one to look at just for uh, uh just you know interesting techie stock I guess kind of. It's an interesting application, I guess. Um, we've got Splunk. It's that stuff that uh, they found in the movie Holes with Shia LaBeouf. Uh, you know it, Splunk. Um, I, it's not wrong. I don't have that wrong. We've got Marvell, Ballard, mm -hmm. um, American Eagle. Again, as I've mentioned before, clothing. Interesting to look at clothing companies. Um, Ping Identity. Uh I don't know what Ping Identity is, but it sounds interesting. I know that. Um, we got W&T Offshore, Guidewire, another company that sounds interesting to me. We'll take a look at that. Um, Axonics and Global, Global Medical REIT. Honestly, not a company that I'm super familiar with, but I do have a couple real invest real estate investment trusts in my portfolio. Only one of them is really healthcare, so it might be worth taking a look at that. I'm going to take a look personally, see what it has to offer for me. Thursday before open, we have my baby, Plug Power. I have a good feeling about this earnings. I think there's going to be a quality quality quarter posted by them. Um, they, it's really, I mean, I've doubled my position in this stock too. Um, I've doubled my um, initial portfolio value at least, I guess. for from This stock alone is, has doubled in value. How about that? Um, this position, I have over 100% gains in. Can I say that right? I feel like I'm saying it wrong. But... Yes, I've doubled the portfolio val uh, doubled the value of my position here with Plug Power over the past year. So I'm excited to see what more this has to offer for me. 
Um, I'd love for it to keep going up, I'll tell you that. I don't really, I'm not feeling like locking in gains yet. If it goes back down, I will pick up more because I do like this company for the long term, four or five years out. Um, we have another retailer, Kroger. Uh, it was interesting to see how the grocery aspect looks um, as far as any sort of supply chain issues with coronavirus impact. So it'll be interesting to see how Kroger gets impacted from it in terms of guidance. Um, we got Burlington Coat Factory. Again, clothing. Um, Sienna, an interesting stock I used to be in. Um, I sold out at like a 50% gain on this bad boy like way back in the day. Uh, this was a good the first year I started investing too. So um, it was a good good position for me. I don't plan on getting back in. It's not a stock I like particularly too much. Um, we've got a... a New something. I don't know what that little circle symbol is. I really don't. Um, and the one under it, I got to be honest. I'm not sure what that one is either. It's an interesting logo for me, and I don't know. But um, we'll see what that is. I can't wait to look it up. Um, we've got Eye Point, uh, BJ's, and do not laugh. Do not laugh when I say that. Okay, it's BJ's, and there's no joke about it. Okay. It's not funny. It's not freaking funny. Uh, we got stage stores. Stage stores. And Canadian Natural. Sounds like an oil company in my perspective. Um, and since it's Canadian, uh, we like to look it up. Um, obviously, I, I'm interested. Um, Canadian Natural. Let's take a look at Canadian Natural Resources. And guess what? Um, needless to say, oil and natural gas. Um, let's be honest. I'm kind of a genius. I just want you to, to realize it. I mean, I, I know what a company is before even knowing what they are. I mean, I've been at this game a little while, okay? I deserve some, some respect on that one. Well, maybe the most obvious guess of all time, but that's fine. Um, after close Thursday... We've got Costco wholesale. wholesale. I don't like saying that. Wholesale. Um, Costco is one of the best companies out there right now. Best run companies. Management's fantastic on that company. But again, um, as with any retail stock, it'll be interesting to see what. That's right. Guidance. It's all about guidance, guys. That's what this whole market's about right now. That's where recovery comes from this nightmare correction. It's going to be guidance. Um but Costco's a very well-run stock, and I really want to build a position in this. So this drop has been fantastic because, really, i got a lot of stocks that I wanted to, to get into. But Costco's certainly one of them. Um, I don't know if I want to wait for these earnings or not because I think these earnings will be good enough to bring this stock back up a good 3-4%. Um, I don't know what Monday you know, through Wednesday looks like for me, though. I don't know if it's going to be green or red. It's hard to tell at this point. It really is. But we'll see with news over the weekend what we get. We've got Okta. That's right, Okta. Everyone knows Okta. Um, after that, we have Funko, the makers of the Funko Pops. You know them from uh, making a figure that looks nothing like what it's supposed to, but they've made it for every single character in every single show, in every single video game, in every single everything that it possibly could exist. There's a Funko Pop for it. There might be a Funko Pop of me already. I gotta be 100% honest. I wouldn't be surprised if there was. Or if there wasn't, I guarantee you, you could tell me that 20 of them that are supposed to look like something else, um, all different things, probably do look like me. Let's be fair. Funko Pops, I don't get it. But there is a collector's market for Funko Pops. It's interesting. Uh, I don't know. They're in. They're certainly in right now. So it's an interesting stock to look at at least. We've got Organovo, um, Village, we've got American Outdoor, Adesto, uh, we have El Pollo Loco, um, everyone knows it's a classic one, um, pretty much, you know, I just blame them, El Pollo Loco can eat it, they're trying to copy my favorite um, TV show, Breaking Bad's uh, Pollo Hermanos, clearly. No, I'm just kidding. Um, El Pollo Loco, it's not a regional chain for me, so I've never had it personally. So, interesting to see. I don't know if I like that or not. Do I like, 
I love chicken, so I think I might like it. Um, we've got H and R Block, big quarter for them, obviously. Um, as tax season is amongst us, I do have to do those taxes, and I uh, certainly do not want to, but I do have to do them. Um, we've got Progen, Progeny, 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 Progeny. That's what I'm calling it. Um, Friday, though, that's right, Friday. We're not blo- we're not bloking around. Hey, we're not bloking around, eh? Sound that's a British thing. Um, Friday before open, though, we've got Vermilion. I don't want to say the second one, but I will. Oncolytics, um, oncology, maybe. Oh, I don't want to talk about that, guys. I don't want to talk about that here. That's just not what we want to talk about. Uh, we've got global. That's right, global. We've got Evofem, um, which again, this is another a biotech company. So interesting to look at those in this market now with how crazy it is. It's just like crazy on crazy on crazy. So definitely take a look, especially with uh, Biopath Holdings right after it. Then we have Telia, Pattern, and um, Blue Green Vacations. Definitely I think that's one that's going to get hammered pretty bad because I think any sort of luxury vacation stock right now, which I made a call on last year thinking they'd do very well, well, now is the time they get absolutely devastated because really... There's going to be a limit on anything like that. There's going to be travel limitations by countries. Um, Stocks like this probably going to get hammered pretty hard. Uh, no doubt about it. So, interesting one to look at. There's American Air Sports. And finally, we're going to fix it, fix it with the little Hudson Global. Um, it just reminds me of, uh, you know, pilot uh, Mr. Sullivan landed that plane in the Hudson River, and that's just when you think about Hudson Global, you know, great name recognition there, I just love it, um, he saved all those people by landing on that river, can you believe it, could you do that, do you think you've got what it takes, I don't think you do, Woo-hoo. 